Hello and welcome to the Lost Boys Podcast. My name is Chris McGuigan and you're listening to podcast number 163 on May the 10th, 2013. Well, this week I catch up with Stuart McDonnell from the Celtic Shirt. And if you don't know what the Celtic Shirt is, it is a website that has photographs of old Celtic jerseys going right back. And Stuart has gathered together a huge collection of shirts worn by Celtic players in the past. And he buys them and he puts them up on the site for everybody to look at. And while you're listening to the podcast, you should check out his website, which is theceltishirt.co.uk. A really fun chat with him. And uh, some of the shirts he has are fantastic. And the stories he has to go with them are, uh, are very entertaining. Finally, listen right to the end of the podcast because I need your help with something and I'll talk to you all about it after the interview. Alright, so it is the 8th of May and I'm delighted to say that I have on the line Stuart McDonald, better known probably on Twitter as the Celtic Shirt. Good evening Stuart, how are you? Uh, good evening mate, how are you? I'm fine. Good, good, good. Um, been thinking about having you on for for quite a while because I've seen loads of your tweets and all this here kind of stuff. And when I started to follow you, I wasn't exactly sure what the Celtic shirt was. What's, it, what's the Celtic shirt? Uh, to me, it's it's, it's 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 my collection of shirts worn by our heroes and legends from throughout the years, um, and it's all started off just with me getting one shirt and before you know it I've got a website and before you know it it's a collection and and, 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 and that's it really. And, and why did you set up a website? Was it just sort of your, your, your little fetish kind of thing where you were collecting all these shirts and thought yeah why not? If I've been completely honest I, I, I bought a new house in 2008 and I thought you know it'd be really nice to have something a bit different uh, really Celtic memorabilia in the house, everyone's all got their, their pictures and programmes and scarves and everything else. But I thought I wanted something a bit different, and I managed to come along and find one of Arthur Boric's uh, match-worn Celtic shirts from the year uh, we'd done three in a row in 2007-2008 season. And uh, that was great, brilliant, but then it dawned on me it wasn't... It wasn't it wasn't the hoops because obviously it was a yellow, yellow goalkeeper's home shirt, and uh, I thought it'd be nice if I actually had a hooped shirt for the house. And I could you not know, see in the space of a few months. I had about four or five, and the bug was oh, completely bitten by then. Um, and before I knew it, I was making contacts left, right, and centre, and then had a few more shirts, and then. I was looking online and I'd seen that all the other, any, basically any club you can think of, they had some sort of uh, other collectors uh, of their shirts and they had websites. So I went looking for uh, a Celtic shirt website, nothing there. And I couldn't believe it because you've got the great Celtic website, so they're like the Celtic Wiki, um, Collectors Club and like Celtic programmes online. But there was nothing specific for... Celtic shirts and I work in IT myself um, and I thought I'm going to put together a website <laughs> put, 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 put together a website and uh, pff, must be that's kind of about what, 2000, late 2009 and we are where we are now and I think that was really set up before I, I got into Facebook and Twitter so it was just a website but now obviously Facebook and Twitter and other social media um, uh, types are about it's just it's completely going arm and legs to be honest with you. <laughs> the, the one thing I found really uh, unusual about your website was you know there's hundreds of Celtic websites out there and we all know them well and uh, usually when you click on the links page it's you know a link to the Celtic wiki and the football club and all your bog standard things that every Celtic supporter goes to visit but yours is a is a strange little cult of strange wee people that collect football shirts. Uh, yeah, and it's 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 amazing when when you go looking. Uh, sometimes you, yeah, I speak to folk and you go, you 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 collect sweaty football shirts. Oh, yeah, you just kind of what are you on about kind of thing. But when you actually go searching online and speaking to other collectors, it's it's absolutely massive out there. And there's just obviously loads of people out there that have got the same 
same idea and everyone will have their own different reasons and why um, why they collect uh, f- football shirts um, so aye, the links page there is uh, it's, it's amazing how all over the world you'll find people collecting football shirts and in and, and the case with Celtic you've no idea how far all over the world our people actually would collect our match loan shirts as well I mean I, I know uh, Collectors who are interested in Celtic shirts from uh, like uh, Thailand, um, the US, Canada, um, Australia, um, and I, I don't really know really any other club that would have that reach of people out there interested in our kind of uh, memorabilia like that. And the sweaty the better, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Not to sound, as you say, too much of a fish. I suppose that the more the more uniqueness is got on it, um, then the more I don't know, the more memories, the more authentic it might um, it might come across. And uh, now, when you get them delivered the post, are you ever tempted to put a few in the wash first? <laughs> No, but the missus would probably if she could, <laughs> if she could, to be honest with you. But that, 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 that's the thing. I mean, obviously, you get you get the shirt because sometimes you get shirts straight off the player's back, and they do have the dirt stains and they smell a bit. Or you do get them x amount of time after a game, so they've been through uh, the wash in the kit room uh, and, and whatnot. So you generally just get a shirt the way the way it comes, and um, I would probably say you leave it. The way it is, some people might want to go get it signed, or some people might want to go get it framed. But to me, having a shirt is, is having a shirt the way it was it, it, it was worn. So um, I like mine just the way, just but just whatever the, the, the way they come in. That's that's the way they'll stay. Now, obviously, you know, I, I lived in America for quite a few years. I lived in Canada for Canada for quite a few years. And every little supporters club you go to, no matter where you are in the world, everybody has a couple of framed shirts up on the wall. Do you frame them when you get them, or are you past that point? Did you frame them at the beginning? No, I, 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 to me, I'm not a fan of framing. And you'll have match one shirt collectors, and they'll some will say, "Oh, you need to frame them. You need to whatever." And everyone will have a different thought on it. But for me, it's and as I just kind of said there, it's, it's about the shirt was worn, and to me, getting that the way it was worn, that's part of the magic about it you can you can you can take it out you can look at it you can sometimes if you want smell it if you're that way inquiry, <laughs> um, look at the marks and and especially now with the more modern shirts they have got so many differences to them from the actual replica shirt which you would buy out of the club shop um, so it's good to kind of see all the differences on the shirt and if you put it in a frame that, that's it it's it's behind a bit of a glass and you can't really get all that from a, a, a pane of glass. But in saying that, I do have one shirt uh, that was framed, which I, I'd bought framed, and that was um, the shirt that Tom Boyd wore the day we stopped uh, 10 in a row uh, when we beat um, St. Johnson 2-0 uh, in May 97. Um, and it's got a nice wee uh, plaque just at the bottom of it, and it says uh, Tom Boyd, um, match-winning shirt, Captain Celtic. And to me, that's just that's just perfect. It, it captures everything in there. And thinking of that shot, that takes you back to the memories, which I'm sure we'll all have, or the emotions and everything else that happened in that day. The last time we all cried at Celtic Park, you mean? <laughs> I, I think I think I think that's probably to find that a lot of grown men would say that they've cried. Well, let me put it this way: cried with happiness. We've cried a few uh, times since. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I think I think it was probably the last time we the. the as well, um, I'm pretty sure quite a quite a lot of turf and whatnot was dug up by the fans when they come out of the park after the, the the trophy presentation and whatnot. And I don't think we've been in we've, we've been on the park since then. No, no. So sure, you say there's there's little subtle differences. Are you you talking about the embroidery for a cup final, or is there more to it than that? Because I mean, just to the average Joe, you wouldn't really think oh, a replica is a replica. You know, is it not the same as what they they, they were every week? Yeah, I mean the your, your, the likes of testimonials and cup finals, and uh, they always have a wee bit of embroidery um, on there, or or or, or the game detail kind of printed on there. But from I'd say, f- I mean, f- throughout the decade, there's always been subtle differences between 
um, what the uh, replica shirts you would get from the cleaners would wear, like going back to the 70s, where replica shirts probably weren't, weren't they didn't really get them, but the, you could maybe get one or two for somewhere. Um, and the Celtic player shirts, the badges, the Celtic crest would be like far much bigger than than you'd see on a replica shirt. But kind of going forward to especially the modern age with the Nike stuff, um, the differences on just a normal SPL shirt would be that, um, for example, in the 2007-2008 um, season, um, there was a, a mesh on the player shirt, there was a kind of, it's a kind of meshy on the back with loads of wee ventilation holes on it. Mm. Whereas on the replica shirt, it didn't have that. Or your replica uh, shirt then had on the bottom corner a wee Nike Dry Fit logo. The player shirt didn't have that. And but there's loads more as you go through the the, the, the years. It might change and, and add different differences in as well. So that as a as a collector, there's always the things that you're always looking out for when you get when you get a new shirt from a new season in. So I have to ask this right off the bat. I mean, I know you set the site up in two thousand nine all this year, kind of crack. Yep. How many shirts have you amassed in that period? I think um, okay, being honest, about fifty four. Being about fifty four. About 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 fifty four. Um, I've I've just got a a, a long sleeved a Celtic home shirt from ninety four ninety five and and there there's there's there, there's a big difference right there from a replica from that time. You couldn't get the the, the Celtic shirts in long sleeve. It was only the players that wore long sleeved. Um, so I've just got a long sleeve shirt from. From ninety four ninety five season in, and it's from one of the three games where we wore numbers on the sleeves. Mm-hmm. Um, I think at the start of the season, um, the SFA were at war with Fergus over everything, and um, they said that they yeah, have to have numbers on the back of your shirts. Now, as you know, on on the home shirts, Celtic never wore um, numbers in the back of the home shirts. Um, so Fergus was trying to get try to get one over on them and say right we'll put them on the sleeves. So for three games we we wore numbers in the sleeves and I think uh, the SFA said to Fergus right that's fine but we're going to fine you a hundred grand if you don't put numbers in the back of the, the shirts. <laughs> so I think after three games and we also know how tight Fergus was that um, he wasn't going to about to give the SFA a hundred k for nothing. So um, they put numbers in the back. So. So I think that I think that I think that was number fifty four. Aye. Was this one of the Holy Grail shirts? I mean, I'm sure there's lots and lots of shirts out there that you would love to get. Would that oh, have been one of them? Aye. Um, I know we weren't too successful around that time, um, but the the ninety four ninety five Hamden season was my first season as a season book holder. So as a as a fourteen year old boy, make my way to to Hamden in my first season book. It, it kind of struck a chord with me and. Um, Obviously, big we signed big Pierre, and um, so it's a kind of for for me, it's an it's an iconic shirt. So it was it was always kind of one that I was always looking out to get, and then one came along that was long sleeved and even better because you couldn't buy long sleeves in a replica. It's even better that you can put it to one or three games because it's got the numbers on the sleeves, and then you have the wee story. Well, why did we have the numbers on the sleeves? So um, that's an absolute crack. I'm delighted to. Um, Delighted to pick it up for the collection. So, do you know whose shirt it was, or it's, was it it's a, a squad shirt? It's a number. It's got, uh, it's got number fifteen on both um, on both both sleeves, um, and I think, as far as I can remember, um, I think only S- Simon Donnelly came on in one of the games. And from what I can see in the team sheet, I don't think he'd be number fifteen. Um, and I'm trying to find out for the other two games. There seem to be a couple of subs come on in the other two games. Um, and I'm just trying to find out if I can find who... Um, well, I know who come on, but anywhere I can just do some more digging to find out what numbers come on. Um, but to me, because it's from the first season, as a season book cold on the long sleeves and everything else, to me, it doesn't really matter if it doesn't turn out to be match one or not. It's still a player shirt from my first season as a season book cold on all the differences there. And definitely one that... Um, I was definitely chuffed to get a hold of. And if it was Paul Byrne, come on, there wouldn't be any sweat on it, so that's a good thing too, right? 
Well, we're going to be it to the, I can't it to the games next season. <laughs> so, okay, so you, you're collecting these shirts, right? And I know from your website you go back, um, you can view the shirts as far back as, what, 1990? It was 1990. I've got Paul McStay's um, long sleeve shirt from from the 1990. Aye. League Cup final, um, so that's that's the kind of earliest one that I've got. So if I manage to pick up a, an earlier shot from or for that set, be on to the website. And is it your ambition to to sort of work further back from earlier years than that, or have you sort of set nineteen ninety as your cut off date and trying to get as many from then on from you were watching Celtic yourself? Um, no, it honestly just depends on what shirts come my way because you never know what uh, what shirts are going to be offered to you. Like just now, I, I could I could come off after speaking to you, and I could have an email from somebody, and they've got a Jimmy Johnson shirt from such and such, and you're, oh. it just it just comes out of nowhere. But, um, no, I mean I, I do I do prefer the more uh, the kind of nineties going on. Especially in mid nineties, late nineties, because that's also when I first started really going to the games and season book and stuff like that. Um, but no, I'm 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 open to whatever shirts shirts are out there. Um, certainly, there's obviously the more the further you go back, the the more, the more rare shirts are, um, because in the kind of the 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 the, the Nike and Umbro. Uh, like under, under a new years, um, the players got lo- uh, loads of shirts a season. Whereas when you go back to like the the seventies and eighties, you were lucky if the players got like, two or three shirts a season. So, yeah. and the, the, they're wearing them every week. So some where I get binned at the end of the season, and somewhere I went here, there, everywhere. So anything I'd probably say from I don't know what early nineties and. Earlier than that, are, are very, very rare, just purely because the players never got that many shirts a season. And even then, when you think about it too, I mean, the players didn't get their own shirts then. You know, there was probably 15 jerseys for the first team or, or whatever, yep. you know. Absolutely. You you, you could you, you could pick up a, a, a shirt from, let's just say, the, the centenary season, and it could, be, could have been worn by, Christ, it could have been worn by everybody <laughs> in the team. I mean, there are there are some examples I've seen where the kit man would put uh, the initials of the player on the, the back of the collar um, of, of the shirts. But uh, again, fe- feasibly, uh, it, it, you pick up a shirt and it, you can't nail it down to who who it's been worn by, unless um, obviously it it's comes with somebody saying, "Oh, yes, it was specifically worn by such and such in this uh, in this game or whatnot." But but the further you go back, it's really the shirt could have been worn by a number of players over the course of the season. And the, the, the value of them then must be uh, a lot higher. Um, I know, sort of, you know, looking through your site and stuff, that you've, you've spent a pound or two on some of these. I, I, I won't go publicising it, because the missus will probably listen to this <laughs> podcast. Um, but no, I mean, I think some of them obviously are worth a lot of money. Um, but to me... The kind of money's irrelevant because it's it's the memories that that they have. I mean, and like take take for example, like Larson. I've got Larson shirt the night he scored that goal in Boa Vista to put us through to UEFA Cup final um, ten years ago this month. To me, that 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 whole UEFA Cup run was is probably the 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 kind of peak of like my Celtic supporting career so far because it was just it was unbelievable like. Us getting to European Cup finals just wasn't the done thing, and to do what what the great man done for us was just outstanding. Um, and I, I I was speaking to uh, Celtic this week, who are going to be doing a display inside Celtic Park from Wednesday the fifteenth of May onwards, um, marking uh, sorry commemorating uh, obviously the ten ten years since uh, we were in the Cup final, and they're asked to loan Henry Larson's shirt from Boa Vista in. Um, so obviously to me that to me that means more than any money in the world at the fact that Celtic have asked me to loan one of my shirts for it to go on display and, and obviously in commemoration of the, the 10 years since the villain, to me that means more than anything. 
So it must have been humbling for the club to actually uh, contact you, that you're now the man with the shirts. How did all that come about? You know, I've been speaking to the, 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 the visitor experience, to do all the tours and everything else at Celtic and, and the... It's always, they've always known what shirts I've got, um, but I've done the tour quite a, a few times at Celtic Park, and although they've got the boardroom with all the trophies and everything else, they don't really have that many shirts on display throughout uh, the stadium, so it's only kind of like two or three cabinets they have dotted about, so they've always said, yeah, obviously they, they change the displays all the time, and they've always said when we're going to do the right display and we need the right shirt, then we'll, we'll kind of give you a call kind of thing. An email came through um, on, on Tuesday just saying, would you, be, would you be happy to loan it to us? And <laughs> it was hard to not write back, ecstatic, aye, no, <laughs> y- y- here we go. Because um, Celtic do it quite a lot, because there's, 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 there's loads of collectors out there. So it's very easy for Celtic to um, just go for a specific um, commemoration from our time, like I know we played Man United Legends um, last season or the season before, and the new Henrik was playing, so um, they contacted my collector friends to get uh, Henrik shot from his last game against Seville he's kind of testimonial and he also had one of uh, last in Sweden shirts, so they got those two shirts side by side in a cabinet with Henrik scoring in the FA Cup final and whatnot. So, um, so the, the, the Celtic can be very specific in what they want to put displays on. So, it was just waiting, obviously, for the right display to come along, and uh, I thankfully had the right shirt that they want to what they want to show off for a wee while. Have you? Through this, through this fetish that you do have, obviously, have you contacted the club about maybe obtaining some of the shirts and have they been cooperative or have you avoided that completely? Um, Celtic, um, of our, our, our Celtic through the Celtic Charity Fund have been doing, been auctioning off loads of various shirts over the past few seasons. Um, for example, like, kind of one-off special shirts. Like this season we've had the, the Celtic Charity Fund logo on the shirts. We've had uh, the Tenants Extra logos on the shirts in the last 16 of the Champions League. And Celtic have auctioned them off through the Celtic Charity Fund for charity. So um, it's kind of those, those, those shirts that, um, uh, that they can pick up through the club. Um, I have inquired uh, numerous times about just other like S- your normal SPL shirts and whatnot. Um, but I think a lot of them get... Uh, put to other various charities and whatnot, um, and I think obviously the players have obviously got their own shirts as well, which they do a lot of um, things with themselves, giving them away to fans or charities or supporters clubs and whatnot. So there's not actually that much that comes comes out of the club um, out with kind of the the, the one off shirts that they, uh, they they do for charity. So would you then sort of go hunting on eBay and places like that, uh, trying to find some of the some of the more collectible ones? Well, eBay is one avenue, but you really need to be careful on eBay because about ninety percent of the shirts on there will probably be fake in some way. Um, a lot of the, the 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 shirts that I pick up are through um, lots of content I've made through the kind of five years collecting. And the website's a fantastic thing to have there because people have shirts and whatnot sitting in the back of the cupboard and they say, oh, I've I've had this shirt for years and it's no use to me and they'll go looking online and they find my site, they drop me an email and uh, I've I've got this, would you like it? Aye, okay, thanks very much. (laughs) Um, So so the website really helps a lot and and the same way with, with Twitter and Facebook now, it opens up so many avenues to... Different loads, loads of different people because obviously the, the website's very specific. Um, for you, you always have to go searching for Celtic Celtic shirts, whereas you know what it's like on on Twitter. You everyone retweeting and, and everything else, so it's very easy to get a message to kind of get your your message out there. And it always it, it, it never fails to amaze me how somebody will always come back to you and say, "Oh, I seen this and that, and I've got this shirt. Would you be interested?" Kind of thing, and you just take it for there, and you never know. You 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 always end up one or two shirts th- through that. So, having this collection that you that you've built up. Um, you must have a favourite in there 
that you you sort of pull out now and again. You go, this looks pretty sweet, do you? Uh, it's 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 an easy one just now. Um, I've got I've managed to pick up a Tony Watt shirt from the night we beat Barcelona 2-1 in the Champions League this season. Um, to me, that that was such a special night. Um, it was just... I don't think anybody could really believe that we were that we were beating Barcelona. And, and to put Tony Watch up from that game, which he scored in, was just... Just unbelievable. You don't, you don't you don't you don't get that many opportunities in collecting to pick up like the most iconic from a season or a year, and to pick that up was, was just superb. And the young lad coming off the bench to more or less score the winner against Barcelona and uh, the Champions League, which more or less helped us through the last sixteen. I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than that. So, so tell us that that's a really good example, Stuart. Uh, how did you get hold of Tony Watt's shirt? Well, he swapped with uh, Pedro after the game, um, and you see him in the after-match interview wearing wearing Pedro's shirt. Uh, now, I'd imagine quite a lot of the Celtic players swapped with um, various players, and those shirts will all be all be hanging um, up in the Celtic players' houses or whatnot. But knowing uh, quite a lot of through contacts that a lot of the the, 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 the like the Celtic just the Barcelona get no offence to any Celtic players but the Barcelona players probably wouldn't really be that fussed <laughs> about those shots <laughs> right, right. so so I know um, I've got a, a, a contact uh, in Madrid who gets all the unwanted player swaps from <laughs> Barcelona Real Madrid and all, all the Spanish teams um, and he, he, he'd got a few shirts he, he, he'd got Samarasis from the new camp um, and a, a, a McCourt shirt which um, McCourt wasn't used in he played over in the new camp but managed obviously McCourt was obviously there in the changing room somewhere trying to get a Barca shirt um, so there's a, there was a McCourt shirt and I just thought I'm, I'm, I'm going to hang on because I know the guy's good and he can get loads of different he, he will get more shirts and then he, he sent me the email saying I've got Tony Watt shirt match worn fantastic huh? Barcelona 2-1 and I'm interested, and it was, it was it was like almost replying back to Celtic and Tuesday there about loaning Larson's <laughs> top. It's hard to control your uh, it's hard to control your emotions. So um, d- delighted to, to to pick up, and again that's all just came through um, contacts and making friends through through collecting um, as well. Um, so it's always good. Um, just to just to chat about match worn shots with loads of guys, and, and you'll see that on Twitter as well. I'm not always just tweeting about um, Celtic shots. I'm always talking to other uh, collectors from other teams and and everything else. And it's good because you build up a wee network, and you never know what shot might might come out of, come out of somewhere. Um, okay, I have to ask this question. There is a bloke that collects the unwanted players swap shirts. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm guessing what's probably going to happen is that it's probably coming from uh, when the Barca. Well, so when, when the, let's say, let's say the Barca team kit man's cleaning up afterwards, and I think all the players will just there you go, pal. So I'm not interested to have that. Uh, God, the final the, insult. Huh? I the 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 Barca kit man's obviously making a few bob or two when he takes it <laughs> to Spain and gives it over to whoever and and it all comes back. So I, I, I like to refer to that obviously Tony Watts Barca shirt went to Spain for a wee a wee holiday and then and then come back home. Um, so I uh, you know it's 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 definitely one that uh, to me it's just it's it's absolutely brilliant and whenever you. Um, I, I meet people and they kind of tell about the site and whatnot, and they're like, Tony, what's that? You're kidding me on. How'd you get that? <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> and, 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 and the question, they usually fall away. Are you selling it? And the answer's always no. no. Because to, to me, that's just... As I said, you don't you don't usually you don't usually uh, too many chances to collect like, the most iconic shot from a season, and I think even though we've won the league and we've got a cup final um, to go, um, I, I can't think of any bigger game in our season we've had apart from the Barca uh, two one at, at Parkhead. That's obviously just what 
just in the European and the lights at, uh, at Celtic Park and I said to have what he shot from we more or less scored the winners just just brilliant absolutely brilliant now that's a collector's item that's fantastic isn't it aye I, I'm, I'm biased but I think so uh, I don't think you would get any arguments there uh, <laughs> so shirt collecting you know obviously you know being a Celtic supporter and you know we, we've been Celtic supporters for, for a long long time and everybody has a wee sort of drawer with a load of badges in it and you know the odd programme here there and everywhere but is shirt collecting now becoming uh, big time? Because we all got the shirts, you know, when we were kids in the in the Umbro box where you got the, the shirt and the, the, the pants and the socks and, and that was it. That was your shirt. You, you wore it for years afterwards. But with new shirts coming out every year and, you know, away shirts and the European shirts, this is becoming the, the collector's item moving into the future, is it? Um, I think it's. I think it always has been big, and I think now with the the advent of firstly the internet and now social media, you're, you're now finding people are more interested, um, and you are getting more people interested in collecting um, collecting shirts. So for me, it's it's always been it's it's, it's always been big, and it's always been there. Um, Which is, I know some collectors who have got much, far much better collections than mine in Celtic shirts um, and they've been collecting for 30, 40 years uh-huh. so it's always been there it's just I think I think now it, it's just it's a lot more in the public domain because of the internet and the likes of Twitter and Facebook and everyone's talking and, 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 and connecting more now as well Um so to me, it always has been pretty big. And I didn't realise when I first started, as I say, I just wanted a shirt from a new house and <laughs> all, all kicked off from then. And and even now, um, I'm speaking uh, to guys on Twitter and Facebook and they're saying, oh, I'd, I'd love to get a, a Celtic players shirt. And I'm like, well, I'll, I can help you. I can point you. Mm-hmm. And before you know it, I've got five, six shirts. Uh-huh. And I'm, and I, and it just all all kicks on from there, and, and that's still happening. I'm, I'm uh, in the past past few weeks, I've even been talking to some new guys on on Twitter. And they are they are now get some cracking uh, Celtic shirts, and they, they they've started creating creating websites and and everything else as well. And to me, it's another part of the Celtic um, the Celtic community. But when you when you look at how few there are, you know. You know, we're like, we're kids, we, 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 we do the whole programme thing and the Panini <laughs> stickers and the football cards and all that kind of stuff. But there's so many, you know, there's millions of them. But to actually have the shirt would be more on a on a par with, you know, collecting old medals and stuff like that, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think they are that bit more special um, to collect because it's the it's, it's, it's the shirt that the player wore, it's... it's your team's colours, it's, it's it's the badge, it's it's everything that that, that goes with that. Um, I mean, I think uh, medals, Clyde and players' medals, is is probably bigger than um, maybe bigger than shirt, the actual shirt collecting. But obviously, the medals are a lot a lot more rarer. Um, but it's not yeah for me shirts. I just think it's 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 what the the, the players worn wearing for 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 your team and. With, with, with the colours and just everything else, I, to me, I, I think it's the best. It's the best thing to collect. I mean, I, I started with, with programmes and, and badges, and it, it just it just wasn't 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 enough. I think I just needed that something that a little bit more closer closer to the park and closer to the players. And um, I found it in I found it in shirts, and the bug was has de- has well and truly been bitten. But well, when you when you think about the the medals, right? Um, you know, obviously the medals are are, are you know, huge interest to supporters and collectors and all this here kind of stuff. But you would imagine that a player wouldn't chuck a medal out. But well, if they're going to you, chuck a jersey out again, you, that reduces the number of ones available. You 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 you'd be surprised about um, about about players giving giving medals away. Um, there's, there's, I think, especially with regards to losers' medals, players aren't really interested in, in losers' medals. So you'll probably find more losers' medals sure. uh-huh. um, being handed out um, 
uh, to fans, and you'll probably find sometimes that lose, losers' medals ne- wouldn't even leave uh, the stadium because the the player or manager ever would just would just would just give it away. Um, and I think uh, when you look at a lot of the, the, the older players from the sixties and seventies, a, a lot of them have sold their their, their medal collections um, for 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 whatever reasons, um, and they're obviously highly. We look. There's quite a few. There has been lines there for their for medal collections, um, and they went for huge amounts of um, money. But no, there's still examples of, especially like current players uh, from uh, through the kind of mid two thousands um, of players just not interested in medals and just giving them away. And to me, I think it's a kind of it's indicative of the the modern times where maybe for some players it's not how many cars and how many houses that they've got and uh-huh. to them that's that's how well their playing career has been in the sixties and seventies it was shows your medals how many medals have you got have you got you got at home but I think that's my point because you know they still kept the medals or they you know give the medals to loved ones or friends or family or whatever but how many of them like how many of the lions today have the shirts from when they won the European Cup or, you know, won the 1965, uh, you know, Scottish Cup and stuff like that? I mean, I, th- I think I think quite a lot of the lines have still got a fair bit in, in, in their houses and in their collections. Um, I'm not actually too sure how, how much actually, actually came back from, from Lisbon. Mm-hmm. Um, you hear varying different things of well, only a pair of socks come back or a shirt or, or whatever come back. I do know through, um, uh, I've got a good uh, collecting contact friend in Italy uh, who's a big Inter Milan collector and he knows that of at least three or four of the old Inter boys from 67 um, have uh, the the shirts that they swapped with the, the lines after that game uh-huh. and for the right price, they would be available, but the right price is <laughs> is astronomical. Is as not you... what we could discuss if your wife is going to listen to this podcast. <laughs> no, not 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 at all, not at all. <laughs> I know you, you you're talking about uh, you know people in different countries and collectors and all that kind of stuff. Do you be on the the lookout for stuff for other people too? Oh, I, I, absolutely. Um, because bizarrely, obviously my, 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 my website's about Celtic, but you still get people email you going, are you interested in this Man United shirt? And you're like, not really, but I probably know somebody who <laughs> who, who will. Um, and, and, and that's why, as it, you yeah, go on, especially Twitter, I'll obviously be out with talking about Celtic shirts. I'm always chatting away with other collectors from other teams and, and it's a great wee community out there um, for situations like that where they'll go offer Celtic shirts for some bizarre reason and they'll go, oh, I know but I know a guy who, who would be interested in it. Mm-hmm. And I've I've got quite a few Celtic shirts via that way and I've also um, uh, managed to put like Man United Arsenal shirts to, to people's way through, through that way as well. So it's very much... Um, a really kind of friendly community and everyone helps each other out where and when they can. So you have to answer this question, right? I mean, do you sometimes sneak up to the room and dig through them and put one on in a sort of Homer Simpson, Mr. Plough kind of way and come in and go, all right, darling, tonight I am Tony Watt. <laughs> <laughs> if I could fit Tony Watt's on, I probably would, but I couldn't. <laughs> But no, I, I, if I'm being honest, I probably have tried one or ten of them all, and I and I and I, and, and I would be any any collector, any other shot collector that tells you it hasn't is probably a liar. You're very brave admitting that. I think I would have denied that until the day and day. Well, just wait till just wait till all my collecting pals hear this, and they'll be rubbing me. <laughs> At least you know they're exactly like you, Stuart. Oh, I, I can tell they're exactly like you. The, the only problem is that with the more kind of modern, like the Nike player shirts, they're a lot more tighter fitting than your average replica shirts <laughs> as well, so um, they, they, I don't think I even fit half the ones over my head, like for example, I've got, <laughs> I've got KL's bench one shirt from Spartak Moscow away in the Champions League, uh-huh. um, we're also a 1-3-2 without the, the Tenants logo on it, and it's a player size medium, and 
tiny, honestly. Absolutely, <laughs> t- absolutely tiny. And I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even think about that. Do you go into your sweat and stuff when they're announcing that they're uh, releasing a new kit? You know, like Chelsea did, you know, those those tight fit oh. ones that go, oh, God, no. <laughs> exactly. Well, next season we're going to have three new kits because obviously the ones we're wearing this season are specific for the 125th anniversary. So we're getting a new home kit, a new away kit, and a new third kit next year. Um, and throw in, obviously, the goalie tops as well. So um, every collector will tell you that, are, that when a season starts, they've got their tick list, and they'll tick it off as they go through the season <laughs> or which ones they've got. So, so uh, yeah, I'm fully aware of the well, we've got some more kits next year to, to come, so the fun and games will start again next season. So what, what sort of side of the fence do you sit on, Stuart? You know, um, you know there, there seems to be a great debate out there in the football world about, you know, too many kits and they're too expensive and yep. all this kind of stuff. I have a, a really good friend that lives back in Ireland um, called John Courtney. And John Courtney's involved in Umbro in Ireland. And I remember listening to him on a documentary one day about, you know, the housewives were up in arms that, you know, Manchester United had released a third kit. And his point was, well, if you look at the 35 quid or the 40 quid you spend on your kid's football shirt, and they wear it every single day, and they wash it three times a week. By the end of the season, that kit is still pristine. Whereas you get a, a, a regular, you know, Nike shirt or whatever, and you three washes and it's done. Where do you sit on all that? I, personally, I think Celtic don't need three shirts, and especially in the SPL, we only really need an away shirt from when we play. Hibs or if, if any sort of clashes or that come up possibly, but to me I think there's always a certain amount of marketing in there and I understand the club need to try and get money through the door, but I think three kits and then you've got um, like this season with the three new kits, we're getting three new kits next season, It's I think it is a bit much because the what the new strips there and then it's not just the it's not just the forty quid for a top it's the fifteen twenty quid for the the shorts a tenner for the socks and then you've got the the new tracky and the new training top and and everything else and oh, poor obviously I only had that cost on to their season book and their travel to and from games and everything as well and to me I think. I, I certainly feel as if three kits is, is too much, and especially how often they they change them, they change them over. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I know this season has been special because we are marking the hundred twenty-fifth, uh, sorry, hundred twenty-fifth um, anniversary. Um, so I think the, the kit we'll get next season that'll probably last us. I think the, the shelf life's two years before the Nike would want to change it over again, but that's just uh, that's just the nature of the game that we're in. That Celtic are a huge, massive club with uh, a global uh, audience that we've got. That's why I've got somebody like Nike on board because they they, they help us get Celtic out there. All the, the consequence of that is that Nike obviously want more money in, and to get that, they they want to obviously release more kits. So that's where we are, unfortunately. But Celtic fans are a wee bit funny about the kit, I think. I mean, I remember sort of growing up as a teenager, and, uh, you know, this is just at the probably the beginning of this boom for rap- replica kits. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, I've, I've dozens of them hanging up. Hanging up. They're not hanging up at all. <laughs> I've got dozens of them stuffed in the back of the wardrobe, right? <laughs> as, as we probably all do. Um, but what was funny when, the, when when away kits started to become a wee bit trendier at the time and stuff, everybody bought the away kit. But my, my young lad now, you know, now there's three kits and uh, I'll buy him one every year. And since he's been like seven or eight, every season it's like, I just want the hoops. I don't want the away kit. I just want the green away. It, it, to me, it's all about... So it, it, it's the hoops, that's what everyone recognises our, our club about, it's, it's the green and white it's the green and white hoops and I know it's obviously quite hard for a kit manufacturer to try and make a difference on the green and white hoops every couple of seasons um, but I think especially especially now that, that it's not just about 
a football kit and what Cor is. It's, it's the style and, and everything else. And, and, and I do think that a lot of the kits, especially the away kits, the, the, the two this season, the black and the white one, are really smart, the really, really nice. Yeah. I, I, I really like all three kits that, that, that Nike have, have made for us this season, especially the white uh, one two five anniversary. I just think that is superb, absolute. It's got style, it's class, it's just absolutely great. And um, that, that's that's another one on on my tick list. of players one of them. Um, it's on that's on my radar to hopefully get one of them <laughs> in because it's just it, to me it's just it's it's so simple but just so effective. Really, really, really smart. Really nice. It, it, it's funny. Um, a friend of mine when I lived back in Texas uh, went up to the local flea market one day and uh, used to be on the on the podcast and uh, Eddie Travers was his name. I went up to the local flea market and you imagine you know 120 degrees heat in Houston, Texas. And I uh, was flicking through all the football shirts, and you know they had Tigres and Monterey and all this here kind of stuff. And of course, he, he's from he's from he's from Glasgow, and he's a Celtic supporter, Celtic daft, and uh, found the Celtic shirt, you know, and uh, said to the guy, "Oh, how much for the Celtic shirt?" And he says, "You know, twenty five dollars or something." And he looked at the shirt, and it was obviously a fake because we didn't win the European Cup in nineteen sixty nine. <laughs> there was all this, all this embroidery around the badge, you know, European Cup winners, 1969, the Lisbon Lions, and everything was sort of, it was all kind of right, <laughs> but it wasn't right. Are they collectible as well, or are they just absolute trash? Absolute trash. He bought it, didn't he? <laughs> he he did bought that. it for 25 quid. He, he did not pay $25, uh, I'll tell you that for free. I think he paid about $2.50. Uh, <laughs> uh, He'd be lucky to get 25 cents for it back. <laughs> but that, that's, I was in uh, Tenerife in, I think, 97, 98. Um, I, like you say, you're walking about and there's all the fake football shirts, so you see the kind of the Celtic crest peeking out, so you look yeah. in and you pick it up, and it's all a clearly cheap fake of of that season. <laughs> but Absolute it, rubbish. Hi, but the worst thing about it, it was blue and white hoops. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not, blue and white hoops, and you think, this guy's not really done his homework at all, has he? <laughs> he needs so, fire, doesn't he? <laughs> uh, so, so, I think it was a full reel of them as well, so... I don't know if anyone's ever bought them or anyone's like your man who's bought one tucked it away in case it's a, a collector's item one day. But See, I'd be the what... agent. I'd be the agent that would buy that. Go, I bought a blue and white hoop to sell the <laughs> shirt. <laughs> aye, yeah, aye. And you try to turn up the Celtic <laughs> Park on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> There's some belters out there, isn't there? <laughs> oh, I and, and, and even I mean, you still got all your all your supporters clubs. Um, they obviously produce the polo shirts and everything else. Not and, and a lot of them are collectible, just much like badges and programs are yeah. um, as well. But with with the mass production now, I mean, you look at badges. Badges is a brilliant example. You know, every time you go to Celtic Park, you go every two weeks, and you're tripping over new badges every single time you go. There must be absolutely millions out there. Oh, and I bet you there'll be somebody out there who's got pretty much most of them as well. Oh, um, I... I'm pretty sure there's a guy that sits beside me, or sits near me, me the Lisbon Lions lower, and, uh, Lisbon Lions, sorry, um, the Jockstein lower, and he's head to toe in, in badges. Um, I absolutely head to toe, and you think, fair play. <laughs> I must better not fall in the clay the way home. <laughs> I, I, must, I must take him an age to get to get to and from the games, mind you. <laughs> so you, you also, um, Stuart, you've, you've been very good with, with uh, some people as well. I mean, I know um, you, you donate a few wee shirts here and there for, for people raising money for, for charity and stuff like that. Have you become the, the, the go-to guy for that sort of stuff? Without blowing your own trumpet, I know you'll be very modest here. Uh, no, it's not. It's, for me, it's if I've obviously, um, got, like, as, as I said to you previously, we've given some shots away like, to like, a, a local football team or something like that if they're raising funds, or um, as I mentioned, I, I gave a, a signed, a squad signed Champions t shirt from the day we stopped 10 in a row to uh, uh, Mealy's boys to help what they were. Uh, Doing today's money for um, motor neuron disease. And to me, it's if, if 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 somebody's got a genuine cause, then I'm more than happy to try and help out um, where I can because I'm very lucky to have the shirts that I have. Um, to me, I, I look at them and they're, they're, they're absolutely brilliant. 
um, things to own and, 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 and have. And I feel as if like I'm a custodian of them. Um, and if if I can help out any way I can, then um, I'm, I'm I'm delighted to to uh, to try and help out. And through the site and stuff, I know you you've got the option to contact you and you know do swaps and all the rest of it. What what are you hoping to do in the future? Are you hoping for people to continue on? Say, look, I've got this Celtic shirt. What have you got in exchange? Or are you you know you're looking for donations of shirts? Or what's the plan? Or is it just are you, are you just winging it? <laughs> I, I, absolutely anything. I mean, the site, the site's there, and it, 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 it's it's just something that, that ticks along very nicely. That um, people contacted me, and um, I, I'll add. Obviously, you have seen that I've got the date section in there. So if I get a new shirt and the date's not there, then obviously it adds to the collection. So uh, it just basically, the, the future I see is just adding to the site where and when I can, and if that's through. Obviously, buying, swapping, or donations from players or anyone else or whatever, then, 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 then so be it. I, if I'm being honest, I would never. Five years ago, I would never envisage that I'd be doing um, interviews like with Celtic Quick News or doing um, a podcast with the Lost Boys or Celtic asking me for a shirt to be loaned. Um, to me, that never crossed my mind. It was just always. It's just because I've got a bit of an IT head. I could put a site together and as and when I get a shot, I'll take some pictures, put it up in the site and it's genuinely, the site's just there to share these shots with Celtic supporters and other football supporters or anyone else that's interested in the sort of memorabilia and look at the pictures and just take you back to, to that game, that memory and, and what, what that shot means to you and I, I never ever envisaged it would ever get to this point. And if anybody wants to have a little rummage around the site, it's the CelticShirt.co.uk. Dead easy to remember. But the thing to do is follow Stuart on Twitter. And when you're sitting bored at you know six o'clock in the morning, or you're waiting on a on a, an aeroplane, you're 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 farting around on Twitter with your uh, with your iPhone or whatever. The number of times, Stuart, that one of your wee, your your tweets just pops up and there's a shirt there, and you go ah. I remember where I was that day watching yeah. that shirt. <laughs> yep, and and that and that, that that's the whole that's the whole reason why it's there. Is, is I said I'm lucky enough to have this shirt and to be able to share it online. You know, it's like on whatever goes online is is going to stay there forever. That's right. <laughs> so if if somebody can come across my site or or and they see a they see a, a specific shirt and it they can lose themselves in that shirt for a few minutes, taking them back to that game or that time or that that cup run or whatever, then that's what it's about. Because that, that, that's what football is. It's all about memories and, 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 uh, and enjoying what Celtic can do for us. Um, and yeah, that's, that, that's what the site's for. And it, it, it's really cracking. That's what I really love about it. Because it, it does take you back to a moment in time. You know, when you were a teenager, you're a young kid, or even a grown man, and you remember where you were when you watched a specific game on a specific shirt. And it's a wee bit like, you know, when you accidentally fall upon, you know, one of these toy furs, or you're on eBay or something, and there's that wee Darth Vader in the, the Star Wars packet, and, you know, it's going for 50 grand, and you go... I had like five of those and threw them out. Kind of thing. I two, two of them are buried in the gang. And that came, um, I, you know, that, that, that's, that's just it. I mean, I, I still get people saying, oh, I came across your site and I was there 40 minutes later, kind of thing. And to me, that's, that, to me, that, 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 that's great feedback because that's what the whole site's all about. No, no matter where you are or what you're doing in life, if you can stop and just have a have a look through the site and just look at the shirts and whatever memories they bring to you, then that's that's the whole point of it. It's absolutely priceless because it takes you back to you know what music you were listening to at the time, what who you went to the games with at the time, the heartbreak and the the, the elation as well. Just seeing some of those shirts and the the ones that I loved the most. I spent all lunchtime today having a, having a wee nosy and see all the stuff through the nineties. You know when you think of what we went through at that stage, but you are still just so proud to be a Celtic supporter. You bought everything just to just to beat it up them. <laughs> Oh, I, I, and, 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 that, and that was all which pulled the Celtic family together. And to me, I must admit, I do have a, a soft spot for the for for the nineties shirts as well. And um, 
especially the likes of the testimonial shirts and, and everything as well, because you look at I think Celtic are very much an in, in-demand team now for testimonials, and that probably all kind of bore from those games where, although th- things weren't going too well for us up here, we still took thousands of thousands down south for for testimonials in the That's mid-90s. Right. And that was the days before, obviously, your, your cheap travel um Folk would be off, I'd imagine, four or five to a car driving down or getting the train or whatever, and uh, and that's all contributed to how we're such an in, in demand club now for, for, for testimonials. And um, yeah, the, the, the 90 shots have definitely got a soft spot. So, so, just before we wrap up, um, again, the website is the Celtic shirt.co.uk, and to follow Stuart on Twitter, it is at the the Celtic shirt? That's us, yep. Yep, at the Celtic shirt. All right, final question, Stuart. We've been, we've been waffling on here for an hour. If there was one shirt... You knew I was going to ask you this, didn't you? If yeah, there was, yeah. <laughs> If there was one shirt that is missing from your collection, what's the shirt you would love most? Oh, that's easy. I thought you were going to ask for a specific player there. Um, <laughs> oh, that's an easy one. It's from the 1967 European Cup final. That's, that's, it has to be. That's, that's, that's the pinnacle. That's, that's our greatest achievement. And it's, it's an achievement which every Celtic player and every manager is ever going to be uh, compared with because it was just a tremendous achievement. So definitely a shot for the final. And if you are to pin me in a player... Then it's got to be it's got to be Billy McNeil, yeah. the first the first British um, captain to, to to lift it. Yeah, got to be got to be. And one day, <laughs> one day, one day. What just now that just now there's a there's an elderly Italian gentleman sitting <laughs> in a nice big house in in Milan somewhere. <laughs> Just, just wait until I win the lottery. And Mrs. McDonald, if you are listening, it'll be a donation. It won't yes. be a purchase. <laughs> yes, 50 quid. <laughs> Stuart, fantastic. Absolutely great to talk to you tonight. And uh, I urge everybody to, to, to follow uh, follow you on Twitter and check out the site. Because like the wiki and, and like so many things that's so good about Celtic, you can just get lost in this stuff for hours and hours and hours. And uh, you should go and check it out. Oh, bro, mate, thanks very much for asking me on. Been a pleasure. Stuart, delayed to have you on, and uh, the pleasure's all mine. That was fantastic. So there you are, lads and lasses. That's us for another week. That was absolutely smashing. Enjoyed that immensely. As I say, Stuart is on Twitter, at the Celtic Shirt, or you can visit his website, which is celticshirts.co.uk. A few weeks back, you listen to Craig Owens, who's involved in the Blantyre Soccer Academy. And he contacted me during the week to remind everybody that the football tournament, the memorial tournament for Raymond Gormley, is coming up on the 8th and 9th of June. And you can go to the Blantyre Soccer Academy and read all about all that. And uh, he asked me to give it a wee shout out just to remind people. The only thing I want to remind everybody about tonight is if you listen to the Homeboys this week, you probably heard the lads talking about the Kino Foundation and they put up a great article on Hill Hill Media where you're able to contribute to the Kino Foundation and it's going under the banner for it's a grand old team to see and what the lads are trying to do is raise a thousand pounds for the Kino Foundation to pay for the kids to get to Celtic Park and for tickets and all that other kind of stuff. So I'm going to put the details up along with this podcast as well so that you can have a wee look and see if you can spur a couple of quid for the Kino Foundation which is a fantastic organisation and really needs everybody's support. I know that everybody here at Lost Boys are 100% behind it and it's something that we're going to talk about in the weeks and months to come giving the grand old team to see and they should have a wee bit of support. So I said at the start of the podcast that you need to listen to the end, and this is why I want a wee bit of support from anybody who listens to the show and would be willing to help out by contributing a little bit of audio. And what I want you to do is I want you to send me 30 seconds to a minute of stories of you supporting Celtic. And I'll give you an example. If you send me in a wee clip that starts off, my earliest memory of Celtic is, and then complete that, or... My favourite moment supporting Celtic is, or, I'm a Celtic supporter because, and then 
fill in the rest. And we're going to collect all these audio bites and put them on some podcasts that will be available over the next month or two. Now, that all sounds a wee bit vague, and I apologise for that. I still have a few wee things to get sorted out, and I will be announcing this over the next few weeks. But I need to get started on it right now, because it's going to be an awful lot of work putting this together, and I really want to have as many Lost Boys listeners, Heal Heal Media listeners, Celtic podcast listeners, people on Twitter, people on message boards, I want as many different voices on the podcast as possible. And the only way to do that is to get a wee bit of participation. So if you email those to me, and the email address is lostboys at gmail.com, dead easy to do. Just record it on your iPhone in your voice recorder, and then you can just select the option to email that file. And as I say, 30 seconds, a minute, that's all I want. Even if you're telling me I have a green toothbrush because that's the only toothbrush that's the only colour of toothbrush my father ever allowed me to get because he was a Celtic supporter. That's the kind of stuff I want. You know, all the stuff about putting the Celtic view in front of the Rangers news and, and WH Smiths, all that kind of thing. Anything you can think of that is random about you supporting Celtic. It could be your favourite player, it could be your favourite manager, it could be your favourite game, whatever, and send those to me. I know that all sounds very random, but... You will understand what I'm talking about over the next few weeks. But I need a few now to get cracking um, because I'm going to do the first of this series within the next two weeks and I want to make sure it works. If you listen to the Belfast Celtic podcast that we've done a few weeks ago, it's something along the lines of that. Sorry for being so vague. That's the way it is to me. Email them to me. Lostboys at gmail.com. Dead simple. Couldn't be easier. Okay, so that was quite a bit of waffling tonight. Playing as it as usual. Charlie and the Boys, Song of Lonesome Book Mom. My name is Chris McGuigan, you're listening to the Lost Boys Podcast. Talk to you all real soon. Cheers.